inhaled nitric oxide is used in intensive care units. This is different from nitrous oxide, which is also known as laughing gas and can be used to launch rockets. So why would we use nitric oxide when nitrous oxide sounds much more fun? My name is Ken Hoffman. I'm an intensivist at the Alfred Hospital in Melbourne. In this video, we will be discussing the administration, mechanism of action, indications, and side effects of inhaled nitric oxide. This video is supported by the Australian and New Zealand Intensive Care Foundation. There is a link to their website in the description below. Nitric oxide is a colourless, non-flammable gas formed by joining a nitrogen and oxygen atom together with a double bond. It is stored in a gas cylinder containing 99.92% nitrogen and 0.08% nitric oxide, which is 800 parts per million. Nitric oxide is administered into the inspiratory limb of a ventilator circuit. This allows delivery via the inhaled route to the lungs in a concentration of up to 80 parts per million, although there are minimal benefits over 20 parts per million. In concentrations over 100 parts per million, nitric oxide causes direct damage to DNA. In high concentrations, it can also be metabolized to nitrogen dioxide, which can worsen lung injury. Once administered, nitric oxide is absorbed into the lungs through the alveolar membrane before being metabolized to nitrate and methemoglobin with a half-life of only five seconds. In terms of mechanism of action, nitric oxide acts as a potent pulmonary vasodilator. It diffuses into the pulmonary vasculature where it increases the concentration of cyclic GMP. This reduces the concentration of intracellular calcium, resulting in smooth muscle relaxation and vasodilation of the pulmonary circulation. Because nitric oxide is delivered via the inhaled route, it is preferentially delivered to parts of the lungs that are easier to ventilate. This brings us to the indications for nitric oxide, which are 1. Refractory hypoxia due to severe VQ mismatch and 2. Acute pulmonary hypertension and right heart failure. Nitric oxide improves ventilation perfusion mismatch by preferentially vasodilating the regions of the lung that are well ventilated. Another way of thinking about this is that nitric oxide will reduce the amount of shunted blood by reducing the blood flow through poorly ventilated regions of the lung. Either way, nitric oxide is being used to treat refractory hypoxia by optimizing VQ matching. The second indication is the treatment of acute pulmonary hypertension and right heart failure. By acting as a potent pulmonary vasodilator, nitric oxide can significantly reduce pulmonary arterial pressure. This reduces the afterload on the right heart, allowing for increased flow through the right heart with lower stroke work and lower oxygen requirements. The main side effects of nitric oxide include systemic hypotension, coagulopathy from platelet inhibition, and renal failure. Due to the formation of methemoglobin from metabolism, methemoglobin values should be monitored, particularly if using high doses. When nitric oxide is ceased abruptly, it can cause rebound pulmonary hypertension. This is why it should be gradually weaned over several hours. In summary, inhaled nitric oxide is used in ICU as a potent pulmonary vasodilator to treat severe VQ mismatch and acute pulmonary hypertension and right heart failure. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel.